Welcome to the Beyond the Veil Summit, a free online event where you'll explore the mysteries surrounding near-death experiences, mediumship, and the science of the afterlife. Share this event with your friends and family, and come join us on Facebook at The Shift Network. And now your host, Lisa Bonis. Welcome to this session of the Beyond the Veil Summit with my guest, Michael Mayow. Our topic today is Real Mediumship, the Grounded and Evidential Approach. Michael Mayo is a psychic medium with over 14 years of experience, as well as an astrologer and spiritual teacher. His greatest mission is to show that life, like love, is eternal. Michael, thank you so much for joining us today. Welcome. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I'm looking forward to our conversation because uh, I love that we're talking about the grounded and evidential approach to mediumship because even for somebody who wants to believe, it can be really hard to get past one's natural skepticism. So in your experience, uh, what took you from just believing in the spiritual world or spirit world to knowing that the spirit world is real? Right. Um, You know, that's a big question because it's a long journey. It's not just a a quick little sort of instance. However, there is a couple that I can think of that come to my mind. But generally, you know, I think for me, I've always had this great desire to know that this was all real. To know, I remember being like a little kid and wanting to know about God, wanting to know about spirituality, wanting to know the truth, because I think I always knew that there was something more. And I remember, uh, you know, this this took me through all these different avenues of different spiritual beliefs and traditions and different churches and different, you know, spiritual avenues and ideas and techniques. Um, And it's interesting because it wasn't until I found um, more of like the spiritualism uh, approach to mediumship that uh, I really found something that I could find proof for. I also have a very scientific brain. So I have a scientific brain, but then also this thing that leaves room for, you know, something more. And I know for me, one of the most significant experiences that I had was, uh, it was during a training in Scotland um, with a medium called Gordon Smith. And um, we were doing an exercise that was a very basic exercise. But in the exercise, uh, he and I and the 30 other students in the class were doing a healing exercise. And I just had my hands over a, uh, my partner. And all of a sudden, I felt the power, which is an experience that we have as mediums, uh, an energetic experience in the atmosphere, surround my hands. And my hands started to move on their own. And I was like, what is happening here? And as that happened, um, I found that they started to move you know, in these positions. And I just was sort of shocked at the time, but I just kind of said, okay, just relax, relax into it, relax into it. And then I hear the footsteps of the instructor come forward and stand in front of me. This whole time I have my eyes closed, by the way. And then all of a sudden my arms start moving in these really dramatic fashions and like just doing all these really weird things. And I'm like, what is going on? This is so weird. And then eventually I'm like, okay, this has been going on too long. I put my hands on my partner's shoulders, kind of break through that sort of hold that the spirit had on me and uh, just basically signified the end of the exercise. Well, I open my eyes. I see Gordon standing right in front of me. And then I see the rest of the class has been staring at me this whole time. And what was so funny, I was a little embarrassed. He said, you were really, really in that, weren't you? And I was like, yeah, I was because everyone had finished. So I was shocked and mortified that everyone's just sitting there waiting for me to be done as my hands are flailing around. Um, And so then he said, well, while you were in the trance, uh, I could tell that you were very taken over by the spirit world. So I told them to move your head to the left. My head moved to the left. I told him, move it to the right. My head moved to the right. This is all he's doing mentally. He's speaking to the guide who has control over me. And then since he could see that I was being taken over uh, by the spirit, uh, he started to move his hands in these really dramatic ways. And my hands, like a little marionette, was mirroring his hands exactly. And so I had been in such a hold uh, by the spirit world that I literally was just mirroring him. And so for me, that really was a powerful moment because it showed me, well, A, something very real was happening, and B, 
it showed me that my connection, what I was doing, what I was trusting was a very real thing. And so it took me from believing like, yeah, I know I've had all of these experiences, but then it was like, no, no, here's demonstrative proof that there's something bigger than you that's happening here. So that was that, the instance I can really think of that like took me from belief to knowing. Hmm. Well, that's absolutely fascinating. And it opens up a whole box of questions. Um, I've, I've witnessed this type of thing, not anything as dramatic as you're talking about, but I've, I've visited various mediumship schools where they'll, they'll do demonstrations where they'll ask the public in and, uh, you know, you can uh, work with the people who are learning. I'm sure you, you had this experience. And there was one time they were having a mediumship session where people were channeling and, uh, I noticed that some of the people who were in the class who were channeling things, they weren't really very comfortable with it. And they were, it seemed as if they were almost frightened of opening themselves. So what you were talking about here, again, fascinating, but also sounds a little scary. So I'm wondering, is there anything to fear from what's coming through from the other side? Yeah, I love that question. That's actually one of my favorite questions to be asked because this is something that I, you know, you hear a lot of different perspectives and ideas about. And I have found in all of my years of working with the spirit, so that's 14 going on 15 years now, as well as the years of my mentors and teachers um, who have both been working for 30 plus years, they never had a negative, scary or bad experience. In fact, what you realize is as you get to deepen your connection with the spirit world, you actually discover that what they bring to you is love and that's always what they bring to you and so i often will when i hear stories about you know scary things that have happened i really try to look at it from an objective standpoint and try to see what else could be going on here um because i mean just the example that you just gave of people kind of being nervous about trance or channeling it comes from a lot of misinformation or not understanding and that's largely where we get a lot of our fear from it's from this not sure what's going to happen. Um, religion plays a big role, as well as sort of societals, you know, the media, movies, all that sort of thing. So we have this idea that, oh, no, this scary thing is going to overtake me and, and this bad thing is going to happen. And the reality is, is it's not that dramatic. It's actually a lot more mundane. But the magical thing about it is that when you start to find the reality of spirit, the real tangible evidential proof of spirit, it actually shows you that the world is a lot more magical. And what's amazing about it is that we are of love and we return to love uh, ultimately. And so in my experience, I've never had anything bad and scary. Um, that's not to diminish other people's experiences. I just want to, I, I would want to explore them more and see what else could be going on. Does that make sense? It does. Absolutely. Thank you. So though I'm wondering, um, do you do any sort of uh, protection prayers or do you just set your intention that whatever you bring through is uh, only of a certain uh, level of vibration for, for lack of a better way of putting it? Right. So for me personally, no. And if that is something that's comfortable for someone else and that makes them feel safe, um, then, you know, more power to them. Welcome to do that. However, for me, I don't believe it exists. I don't have never had a negative experience. I've always done the same exact thing. In fact, my prayer is pretty simple. It's spirit, please come. I can't do this without you. Please be there. <laughs> That's essentially what it is. Because for me, I already know that there's nothing I have to fear. And the thing with mediumship and for it to be really good, we have to be free of several things. We have to be free of desire. We have to be free of distraction and we have to be free of expectation. All of these things in when we're working mediumistically um, have the power to inhibit and cause tension in our mediumship. And the more tension that we have when we're working, the less clear our channel is going to be for the information. So the more that we're trying or the more that we feel nervous or scared, that will just end up shutting down our energy and having us focus more on the physical rather than focusing on the spirit power and essence. So for me, it's actually better and more efficient to just throw out this idea, because if I were to keep it, uh, it, it would always cause a fear and I wouldn't be able to be fully free. I wouldn't be able to be fully letting go and just completely trusting the spirit world. 
And that's ultimately what we need if we're going to be connecting and getting clear and accurate specific information. Okay, thank you for explaining that. That, that makes a lot of sense. Now, uh, again, going back to the fact that you've, you've actually studied mediumship uh, all over the world. So um, do you believe that uh, is mediumship a gift that you already have to have sort of an inkling that you can do this? Or is this something that really anybody can learn if they put their mind to it? Yeah, uh, for me, I, I know that there's been a lot of people and mediums in the past say that, you know, mediumship is a gift. It's something that comes to you. You have to be born with the gift. And for me, uh, that wasn't the case. I mean, I don't believe that I was born a medium necessarily. I personally feel as though um, I'm one of those that had to develop it, work on it. I do believe that there are people who are born or through early life circumstances have had the experience of, um, you know, traumatic things and things like that that have caused them to become very sensitive to the atmosphere and the environment around them. And that tends to actually lead a bit to sensitivity and mediumship because we're trained to sort of feel all the time from a very young age. Um, but for me, I actually believe that anyone can do this. I believe that anyone will get something um, because we are spiritual beings having a human experience, as I'm sure you've heard that phrase many, many times. And because of that, there's no reason why we can't connect with other spirit. The only difference is that you know, oftentimes I teach my students, the brain acts as an inhibitor of consciousness. So it's actually our little frequency, you know, dialing in uh, radio, if you want to do that, call it that. So what we're actually doing is what we're learning how to take our focus and take our frequency to our spiritual awareness. So we're actually expanding and relaxing our awareness so that we can become aware of more of our power, more of our energy. And when we do that, it allows us to start to attune to the spiritual world. So the only thing that really inhibits people from being able to develop it is their thinking mind. And so what we have, so there's several different things that we do to kind of help you to learn to quiet and still the mind, become passive um, mentally rather than active mentally so that you can actually receive it. I tend to believe that um, I'm essentially teaching people how to use their brain differently. So in our day to day life, we are often, you know, told to do, to act, to get it done, to make it happen. Well, mediumship happens to be pretty much the opposite. It's about relaxing. It's about surrendering. It's about allowing. It's removing more of our thinking mind. Um, and this is what leads us to be able to perceive their world. And it's because of that, that mediumship takes a while to develop. And it takes a long time because we're dealing with ourselves. We're learning to get our own mind out of the way. So I do think that anyone can learn it. It's just a matter, are you willing to do it, right? Obviously, there's going to be some people that are more naturally uh, attuned to that, um, while others might take more work. But it's just a matter of how deep do we have to go until we discover uh, the mediumship within you. All right. So you're talking about uh, teaching uh, classes in this. So what are let's just just the, the top uh tips that you use to to teach people on how to develop their own mediumship yeah absolutely so there's a practice that we do uh it's called sitting in the power um and it's largely taught mostly in the uk which is where most of my development was but sitting in the power is probably the most effective thing so it's a meditative practice where we learn how to quiet and still the mind it's also an opportunity for us to start to feel the atmosphere around us, feel our own energy so that we start to discover what do we feel like? What's our energy like? So that when something else comes into this energy, we're able to identify it. Um, it also gives the spirit world an opportunity to develop us. So what I often say uh, in, those, in those moments to my students, I say, we're going to offer this time to the other world so that they can come in and start to work with us. So essentially, I always like to imagine them as having a little clipboard and a, and a lab coat. And when we sit for them and we just say to them, okay, spirit, here I am. I'm just going to be still. I'm going to quiet my mind. I'm just, I'm just here for you. Do whatever is needed for me right now. 
and I just always imagine them with their little clipboard going, okay, today we're going to twist this energy and turn this up. And they're basically dialing in your energy so that you become more sensitive clairvoyantly, clairaudiently, clairsentient, um, so that you can start to become aware of more and more of the spirit world. So that's number one that I would recommend. Um, number two is find yourself a good development circle. That's always a hard thing to find um, because you want to make sure that the person who's running the circle um, has is, is able to do what they say they're doing, right? Um, for me, I always look to a couple things. Uh, it would be their actual work. So if you've ever seen them demonstrate their mediumship, um, I would want someone who can, you know, get very specific things like names, dates, um, street names, all kinds of things. Those are what my teachers do and what thankfully I've been able to learn to do as well. And I want to find people who can really show this evidence of survival because they must be doing something right. And so I want to look for that and experience as well. So I would like them to be much further along in their journey. So that way I can know that they'll be able to talk to me through whatever appears along the way. And then lastly, I would say, you know, look for someone who doesn't have fear-based belief um, because it's just another hurdle for you to jump through uh, when you're developing. Um, so I would say between sitting in the power and, and finding a circle, those are probably going to be the best things that you can do um, because it's going to be training your brain and then also you're going to get the guidance from someone who actually understands what the trajectory is. All right, thank you for sharing those. Those are really, some really good foundational steps, it feels like. Uh, now, I, I wanna talk about uh, the fact that we're, we're talking about the grounded approach here as well. And that almost seems counterintuitive that you wanna be out there uh, reaching for information, but in the meantime, you need to be grounded in your physical form, which sort of feels clunkier and heavier. So uh, how can we be grounded and also uh, reach to the skies as it were. Yeah, absolutely. So mediumship itself isn't about us going out into the heavens and drawing something to us. It's actually about us learning to be still, learning to be quiet, learning to become receptive. And so being grounded isn't necessarily mean I'm, you know, walking in the grass and having my feet, you know, touching, touching everything and, you know, focusing on my root chakra and all of that sort of thing. Being grounded has more to do when I'm using it with not letting it turn into a free for all, um, letting it be practical, let it be usable. Because for me, the biggest thing is about evidence. So it's about something that can be validated and something that can prove, yes, this person is communicating or yes, this person is connecting to this greater part of themselves. Um, and so I also would say, you know, even anytime we are doing any kind of spiritual work in general, we would need to have a sort of grounded approach because we don't want to enter the realms of fantasy um, that can often happen because our imagination is very, very strong. We want to be able to really show that these things are real. These things are, are valuable. It's part of the reason why it took so many years for me to kind of find my footing um, within my spiritual, spirituality because I wanted to find something that proved this thing was real. So if, taking the grounded approach, really gives a lot of opportunity to make this more of a step-by-step -step practical approach that is valuable and usable for the, the recipient. Um, we want to be able to bring forward as much information that's going to support this, that's going to help um, bring forward this evidence. So being grounded to me is really just about taking this as clearly and objectively as we can. Um, that way we can have real genuine spiritual experiences that actually lead and unfold to greater spiritual understanding. Right, right. So let's go back to what you were talking about a little bit ago about uh, uh, coming through with, with specific information, uh, evidential like street names, etc. And I can see how if you're just learning how to do this, your doubting mind is going to get in the way so much and you're not going to believe anything that's coming through. How do you really tune yourself into picking up 
accurate evidence that the sitter will say, yes, there's no way you could know that. Yeah. Um, so I love this question. Thank you for asking it, because um, especially for the newer people, as they're sort of exploring their their mediumship, um, it's you can look at someone who's been developing for many, many years and go, oh, my God, there's no way I'll ever be able to do that. I'll never be able to get that. And what we have to realize is that development is an unfoldment over time. So it's something that develops through the consistent working, the dedication, the practice. And when my students begin, all I'm exp all I'm wanting them to do is first learn how to quiet and still their mind and learning how to just begin to become aware of their energy. And if they can do that, I'm excited. I'm happy. And what we are learning how to do is actually learn how to become passive and receptive rather than active. So I love how you put it, because this is how I think most people feel this should work, which is, oh, I need to attune my awareness and I need to go get, you know, this kind of specific information. Well, it's actually funny because in mediumship, it's the opposite. It's the less I do, the less I try, the more I can relax and surrender. Then the information actually just comes to me. And so that's what we want to really develop. So when I work with my students in the very beginning stages, I never have an expectation that they should be able to, you know, immediately get all of this kinds of information. That's that thing builds over time. And so when you see a developed medium working, you're not seeing all the years and the hours and the things that they took little baby steps, little tiny um, growth. But I've seen students, you know, go from not being able to do any of this into now being able to give names and all kinds of things. It's about the journey and the step-by-step -step process. So really, to get more specific, accurate information, you sort of have to not want to get it. As you know, counterintuitive as that sounds, it's the more I can leave my awareness open, the better. So it's sort of like this. I always often use the uh, analogy of a sail. So we have a sail and our energy is this big giant sail and we open it out so that we can become sensitive. And what we're waiting for is the wind. We're waiting for the wind to blow so that we can start moving forward in the communication. And so when we have that very open, relaxed way, then the spirit world can impress us in some way, whether that is going to be with clairsentience and we start to feel maybe their personality, their essence, their energy. And just by describing what we're experiencing, we're able to get details uh, about this person who's coming forward. Some people may get pictures um, and then sometimes we'll hear things. Uh, and so it's about becoming open to the experience and learning how to attune your awareness to feeling, to sensing, to this energy around us, which we call the power, that has intelligence. It provides the information. All we have to do is to learn to relax, surrender. Um, so starting off, don't have the expectation of that. If you ever try to look for it, you're going to block yourself. So it's about learning how to, what am I experiencing? Being in the moment and just learning how to feel, learning how to sense. And over time, then the details come then that more specific information comes. But don't jump into it off the bat, hoping that that's what you're going to get. Um, the more that we get rid of this desire for an outcome, the more that we can actually just pay attention to what we're experiencing and thereby give accurate information. All right. Now, you mentioned the power. You've used this word a couple times, and I love that. <laughs> uh, let's talk about uh, using that word specifically to describe uh, what you're talking about, because I know that some people just plain feel powerless. They might not feel comfortable with using that word to describe what they're trying to do. But I can see how using that word is actually very powerful. Pardon the pun. Uh, so yeah, talk yeah. about the use of that word specifically. Yeah, so the power is an experience. So um, I know that, you know, a lot of people probably come from, a lot of people really, uh, have a lot of Judeo sort of Christian sort of undertones, you know, in our society. So many of us have heard of this concept of like the Holy Spirit, for example. Um, I think that's another way that we could actually call the power. So essentially what the power is, is we have our own power, our own energy backpack, 
that we use. So we develop that over time. So it's our, what energy are we bringing to the table, right? And so we work to develop that so that we can provide plenty of energy for the spirit world to connect with us. Then the second part of that would be the power from the spirit. And this is what I would call sort of like the Holy Spirit, if you would. Um, that's another interchangeable thing, but I think it's the same experience. So it's where you feel this shift in the atmosphere, a shift in the power. And what you actually feel, it literally feels like an objective experience of a pressure, a building, uh, a ramping up of energy that occurs that causes our awareness to start to move into another state. And so. When we call it the power, we literally mean it's the power. It's the power of the spirit. And what we're learning to do is to be guided and follow that experience. So it's sort of like a wave of energy that comes into you. And then you ride that wave and you move until the power runs out. Because the power is temporary. The other world can only connect with us in this space temporarily. And for us to actually feel and experience them. That could be our power or that could be just because of them. But Regardless, what's important is that you realize we can do so much more with the power of the Spirit. And there is so much more that comes from the power of the Spirit. So when I talk about the power, you know, I do talk about it in terms of mediumship, but it's also about ourselves. It's also about our own inner power, our own inner spirit. And as we learn to attune to the power, not just the spiritual power, but our own power and energy, we start to discover. What is it that we, with our own spiritual nature, came into this earth to do? And so as we start to attune to this power within ourselves, I feel that that makes people more aware that they're much bigger. They're much more important than, you know, they think they are. Oftentimes we're so made to feel so small, but actually you're just as divine. You're just as important as Anyone that you admire, because the same power that runs through them is the same power that runs through you. It is the power of spirit, it is the power of life, it is the power of love ultimately, and that exists within you. And so, the more that we can learn to attune to our own spiritual power, learning and understanding what that is, the more strength we have, the more ability to understand that we're so much more. And then we can expand that and reach out to the spirit world. So, I think it kind of plays a two part role, if that makes sense. Yeah, that was beautifully stated. Thank you so much for that. Um, now, let's move to another topic here where we've been talking about uh, people who would like to learn to become a medium. But what about people who they don't necessarily want to learn to do it themselves, but they'd really like to find a medium because they they would like to connect with the other side. But mediums have a pretty bad rap in some ways because there have been you know, frauds who take advantage of people who are grieving, etc. So what can people who are looking for a genuine medium, what are some of the signs that they can look for to make sure that they're not being taken? Absolutely. And I'm so happy that you asked that question. Um, this is something that I'm very, very passionate about. Fraudulence in, medium, un, in mediumship, unfortunately, has been around forever. Um, like any other practice or any other you know business there's always going to be people taking advantage of other people now my hope is that people don't throw away you know baby with the bathwater because there are genuine mediums that can actually truly bring forward clarity healing love and messages to show that we you know we are eternal and so for me it's actually a passion of mine to try to educate people about what to look for, what to be aware of. So one of the things that we always want to watch out for is if someone is telling you that you have a curse on you or you have this thing or that thing happening, um, that this, you know, you pay me a certain amount of money and I will get rid of it for you. This kind of thing is an absolute red flag. You should walk right out of that place because there is no curse that's on you. I'll just tell you right now, as a medium, you can watch this video. You don't have a curse on you. <laughs> so what we want to do is to realize that there are people who are trying to swindle us in that way because they just want to get money. So that's number one is just if you see anything in that realm, just go ahead and just throw that out. Number two, you want to look for someone that has a lot of experience. Um, 
sometimes that's hard to tell because you know you're going to hear people that say oh, i was a medium my whole life that sort of thing really look to you know their background their history um where did they develop how did they develop you know and then the other thing that we would want to look at too is is there uh, anyone that you know that have had has had a really good experience already. So word of mouth is actually a really, really good thing. You know, really, really positive reviews and that sort of thing, um, because we want to see that. But what I would often recommend people is if they're able to go see a demonstration of this medium that you're interested in. I think it's important to really investigate the medium that you're going to kind of go to, because you know, there's this really interesting phenomena that happens when we are trying to, you know, when we're sitting in a, in a session with a, with a psychic or a medium, where for some reason our subconscious really starts to open up. And essentially, whether we believe this experience is real or not, um, we're gonna take everything this person says and it's gonna go directly into our awareness, into our um subconscious so even if we don't believe it and we're like oh that's never going to happen there'll always be this lingering thought well remember that one psychic medium told me that something like this was going to happen at some point so it's like a little pathway we sort of hand over our awareness to them and say hey sure i believe that you can get something that i'm not aware of and this means that there's a huge responsibility on the medium to come from an ethical place so to come from a place of understanding human uh, behavior, understanding the impacts and the words that we use. And so this is why I, I don't take lightly looking for a medium for like to, to get a reading from because it can have a big impact on us. Um, and what my hope is, is that if there's any kind of fear that happens in a session, if there's something scary or bad that they're foreboding to you, the spirit world isn't going to give that. The spirit world would never give you something uh, unless there was something you could do about it, right? So they're never going to give you anything scary, negative, or bad because that would cause fear for no reason. And so what you'll know that that's probably coming from the medium's mind. So these are things you want to look for. If you're sitting in a, in, a, in a session with a psychic or a medium and they're just pounding you with fear, you probably know that a they're probably not really connected and b it's probably coming from their mind and c you should probably get your money back and get the heck out of there um and and keep looking until you find someone who really brings forward evidence brings forward truth the last thing i would mention about this is if the person is sitting there asking you a bunch of questions um that's another thing you want to look for so if they're literally just saying, who's this person? What's that about? I feel this, but what's that about? That can be a little bit of cold reading techniques. Um, and I think a lot of mediums were just not trained right. And so they, they don't realize that they might be cold reading and using a little bit too much of their mind in the process. And then obviously you have people who are flat out frauds, but most people are not that. So look for if people are asking a bunch of questions. If that's the case, then I wouldn't recommend working with that person either. Um, you, what you want from someone like, so for example, when I have a sitting with, with people, um, what I have them do is I only let them say yes, no, I don't know, or I need more information. That's it. And the reason why is one, I don't want my brain to come in. And two, I don't want to be, you know, seen as possibly being fraudulent. I should be giving you the information. So it should be coming from the spirit and I should be telling you what the facts are, what the truth is, all that sort of thing. And then you just need to say, yep, I can understand that. So those are the things that, you know, we want to really develop that, that standard of mediumship and want to make sure that people are getting something that is real, something that has value and that something that really can help them. One of the things that you said really uh, stuck here, ask about this. Uh, you mentioned that um, when information is coming through in a reading, you won't receive information that you can't do anything about. I love that. Can you expand on that a little, please? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, it's interesting because it kind of opens this idea into, you know, free will versus not free will. I am an astrologer as well. So I sometimes wonder what our free will is because how are the planets making these things happen? But um, I, I do want to really hit that because that's important. Um, the spirit world is only here. They want to heal. They want to help us. They want to help to relieve the suffering that we experience 
because we live in the illusion that all of this is actually real. And it's actually the spirit world that's the real place or, or the other side of life. Um, and so the spirit world isn't going to bring forward something where, you know, it's like fatalistic, like, oh, this is the end and, and this is all that we can do. The spirit world wants to empower us to be able to take hold of our life, to be able to take control of our life um, and to help us to live the best and most happy and the most free life. And so when they're going to bring something forward, it should be to those ends. It should be to that aim um, because that's their nature. Their nature is love, essentially. And they're wanting what is best for us. And so they want to guide us towards that direction. And so if it's seeming scary, negative or bad, hopefully, if this is genuine spirit information, they will also bring here's a solution. Here's what you can do to mitigate that or lessen that. Or, or something along those lines. Um, so that's also really important. Um, yeah, hopefully that makes sense. Yes, perfect, thank you. Uh, but this also leads into one of my favorite questions to ask people on the summit, uh, because this is the Beyond the Veil Summit, and we're sort of talking about that right now. In your experience, in your view, what is the veil? Yeah, so the veil for me feels like just the, the very subtle dimension that exists between the two worlds. Because I don't believe there is only two worlds. We live worlds within worlds. And this as a medium, I'm highly aware of. Because when I am sensitive, right? So I have my normal Michael brain. That's just, this is Michael doing his day-to-day -day thing. And then I have my mediumship brain. And so my awareness moves through one state of awareness into the other. I believe that's what the veil is. I believe it's that sort of uh, awareness block that being in physical form is necessary um, so that we can actually live what we're and learn what we're meant to learn while we're here. Um, and so this is what the veil is to me. It's essentially just the very subtle uh, bridge or wall, if you would, veil, for lack of a better word, uh, veil between this side of life and the other side of life. And um, the thing and the magical thing about it is that it's not this hard concrete thing that, you know, cannot be moved through. It's actually our consciousness is already connected to the other side of that. And so we have to learn how to relax our awareness if we want to become aware of what's bigger than just this 3D world that we exist in. Um, and so it's super important, you know, to see the veil more as uh, a, a consciousness thing rather than a physical thing. So it's our awareness that experiences all things. And so we're learning how to focus our awareness either in the physical world or we can learn how to move it and almost like a little elastic rubber band, move it into this space for a time so that we can cross the little bridge uh, past this veil so we can become aware of the other worlds. All right. Thank you for that. That that's that's a beautiful explanation. Um, I'm looking at the clock here. We're running low on time, but I want to make sure before we wrap this up that I mention your website, and that is mediummichaelmayo.com. So if people visit your website, what will they find? Yeah. So you will find the events, uh, different events that I hold. I, everything that I'm doing right now is currently online. Um, given the circumstances. And so uh, you will find my events. You will find more about me. I have a lot of uh, material, videos and things like that, educational things on there, um, as well as mentorship programs. So one-to-one -one mentoring um, so that you can learn to do this yourself um, and as well as readings. So those are all things that you can check out and find on there. All right, perfect, thank you. Um, I, I've got to ask this because I know we're taking it down another rabbit hole and we're running out of time, but you mentioned that you're an astrologer and that there's sort of conflicting, like here are things that the planets seem to be maybe not causing, but I, I'm not going to try to put words in your mouth, but it seems to conflict with, with free will. Go down that rabbit hole if you would. <laughs> yeah, certainly. So, that's always the interesting thing because, you know, I do a traditional form of astrology, 
called traditional astrology. That's kind of what I've learned. And um, we do something called orrery astrology, orrery astrology, and it basically means of the hour. And so literally people just ask a question and then I cast a chart the moment that they ask that question. And then I'm able to literally get all kinds of accurate information. I mean, I've once found my lost keys um, using this technique. Um, and also I've given things up to the exact day that said these things are going to happen. I just got a call from another uh, student of mine, or uh, just client of mine that she said, oh yeah, remember you said these partners were going to be coming back into my life? They came back on this exact day that you said was going to happen. And so it makes me wonder. You know, is there free will? Because, you know, I'm watching these little these little symbols on this little chart, you know, oh, I know in this many degrees, this thing's going to happen, and then it happens, and I'm just kind of like, okay, do we have free will? Does that actually happen? But for me, I would have to say, I think that there are some things in our journey that are planned and determined. How we get to those points, I think that's where the free will exists. Um, and so it's more about us learning how to maneuver and work with with what we can work with right influence what we can change what we can um and and kind of essentially that <laughs> we have all those points that we're going to hit along the way um but your day-to-day -day life the things that you choose the things that you want um i feel as though how we get there is kind of up to us Right. You know, I just came up with the perfect analogy as you were talking. It's like the conversation that you and I are having right now. We had a, uh, a very loose framework. Uh, we start with me introducing you. We're, we'll talk about maybe a couple points, but then we'll free flow between those things and then we'll wrap it up. So it almost sounds like uh, what you're talking about, what the planets are saying. Those are the, the framework and how you get from this point to this point is where the free will comes in. Is that accurate? You That's think? Sounds really great. And uh, I would also just add that um, it is, it's interesting when we talk about free will and all of these sorts of things, that free will, um, the desire of what we want uh, is is one thing, right? That's like, okay, I'm going to power myself to, you know, go this direction and do this thing and make this thing happen. And it's really interesting because as a medium, what I've learned is that the more that I actually surrender my free will to the power and the presence and the love of that divine guidance, I actually am ending up gu guided to the better outcomes anyway. So it's a really funny thing is like the, the idea of like free will functioning and then, um, you know, me handing it over to the other world so that they can lead me to the best outcome. And the funny thing is interesting too, one of my teachers in astrology once said, you know, the chart speaks about the mundane world. It's about if you do nothing, here is the world that we are going to experience. But when we spiritualize ourselves, we learn to rise above our chart. We learn to move beyond the limitations of these physical uh, parameters that maybe we were born into and we learn actually how to then be the creator we learn to then become the one that is guiding and the funny part is is that I don't even feel like the creator because I go spirit where lead me lead my feet show me the way open the door um, and so it's just funny when I think about free will it's a funny little topic for me so Absolutely. And we could stay on the line talking about this for hours. But again, I think this is a really kind of good way to wrap it up. We're almost out of time. I want to thank you for being with us today, Michael. Uh, now, before we go, is there anything that we've left out that's sort of just stewing in your brain that you want to make sure that we talk about before we wrap it up? Yeah. So um, I would just say, you know, Mediumship is just one avenue of leading us to the same place. And one of my teachers, Eileen Davies, has always said that mediumship leads us to the threshold of our own inner being. So once you have an understanding that you are bigger than this, once you realize, oh, my loved one is actually okay, which therefore means that I am also this spirit who will also live on. I will be reunited with them. So then what and how do I want to live my life here in a new way, knowing that my spirit is a real thing, my soul is a real thing, and I am going to continue on beyond this. How do we choose then to live our life 
more in line with these ideas of the spirit of love, of compassion. How, what, what does this knowledge now do for me that really helps me to live my own spiritual truth, my own inner being? How do I live that? What did I bring into this world to share with people? And so my hope is that as mediumship or any other spiritual journey that you take, as you realize this, I hope it leads you to a space of love, kindness, and compassion. Um, realizing that we are so much more than this and actually we are all just one. That's what I wish to just leave with everyone uh, this this day. All right, perfect. Thank you again, Michael. It, it's been a, just a, a delight talking with you today. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you so much for inviting me, having me, and I've enjoyed it as well. Thank you. All right. Once again, I've been talking with Michael Mayo, and I want to thank everyone for joining us. I hope you enjoyed this session in the Beyond the Veil Summit. Thank you for joining us for the Beyond the Veil Summit, brought to you by the Shift Network. To learn more, visit beyondthevailsummit.com. To join our global community of people awakening to their divine humanity and taking inspired action, visit theshiftnetwork.com. Thank you again for gathering with us and for sharing this healing path with your friends and family.